Hey everybody, Playtendo Guy here, and today I'm bringing you my review of one of the biggest and most hyped games of the year, Marvel's Spider-Man for the PS4 and the PS4 Pro, and I'm giving you my verdict on Spidey's latest, so without further ado, let's begin. The Marvel Cinematic Universe has been going for 10 years now, and those films have been dominating the box office since, drawing in plenty of crowds and releasing around 2-3 to three movies a year. The superhero films have very much become their own genre with hordes of films to choose from. But for video games, it's a very different situation. There has been some superhero games, but most of them haven't been any good, mainly due to them being movie tie-ins. And by some Lego games and the Batman Arkham games, we haven't seen any other superhero have a game that hit the highs like Batman. But thankfully, that's all about to change with the release of Marvel Spider-Man for the... PS4. It's the first Marvel superhero game in years, and boy, it's been worth the wait. Exclusively for the PS4 family of consoles, Marvel Spider-Man is easily the best Spider-Man heck any game to feature Marvel characters to date. Spider-Man is a gloriously cinematic affair straight from the get-go. You're treated to a lavish-looking cutscene of Peter Parker donning the iconic Spider-Man suit as he goes to deal with another villain, and he swings out of his apartment and straight into gameplay and it's such a smooth transition, I honestly thought I was still watching a cutscene. It's so impressive. Let's get the elephant out of the room first, the graphics, as just before release, early screenshots emerged showing what looked to be like a graphical downgrade with the game. It all had something to do with less puddles in a certain scene. Then some other pictures emerged, and I must admit it did look worrying as some scenes didn't look as good as what the trailers led us to believe. But thankfully, I'm glad and happy to report Spider-Man is an absolutely gorgeous looking game that, like recent PS4 exclusives God of War and Detroit, pushes the PS4 to its absolute limits. The game has some very nice looking lighting, the draw distances and traffic levels are very impressive, it does really make the city look alive. Spider-Man suits all look incredibly detailed and the character models impress. Though some NPCs that wander around the city do look a little so-so, but you're always rushing by so you don't really notice. Where the game shows its true graphical beauty is when you're swinging around the city or climbing up the top of rooftops and looking over the city skylines. It's truly breathtaking and you do have to stop sometimes and just gawp at the beauty on offer here. I could spend all day just talking about how beautiful the game looks, but there's so much more to talk about such as the story. I honestly wasn't expecting much as it's a superhero game and I thought the story would be on the back burner for most of the game, but no, what we have here is an incredibly detailed and well written story that is really enjoyable for both Spider-Man fans and newbies to the Marvel Universe. I won't say too much about the story as I really want to refrain from spoiler territory, but the story balances the superhero shenanigans of Spider-Man and the quieter moments of Peter Parker to a real T. For as epic as Spider-Man's story gets, it's the downtime as Peter that really impresses with plenty of 20-something problems that many people can relate to, such as girlfriend problems and rent issues. It's all here, and you can't help but feel sorry for the guy. For me, I honestly think this is one of the best Spider-Man stories outside the comic books, and it's really better than most, if not all, the Spider-Man movies. It's that impressive. On to the gameplay now, and Spider-Man is another typical open-world game that you could easily think was made up by Ubisoft. There's plenty of side stuff like side missions, bonus collectibles, and towers to find, Yet for all the plain unoriginality of it all, these activities are just so darn fun and I couldn't get enough of them. The reason why all this stuff is so much fun, it's all down to Spider-Man and just how fun and enjoyable it is to be him. Traversing here is utterly divine, you swing from building to building, gaining momentum and getting faster and faster. It's just so much fun getting from A to B and it's been a long time I've said that about an open world game. Traversing here gets better when you add on up the upgrades, the ability to pause time and web to your chosen surface, to running across buildings. It's all such a rush and it never gets old. There's even a fast travel option here if you want it, but honestly I've never thought about it once. As the way Insomniac has implemented those web mechanics, it's so impressive you could easily waste hours upon hours just swinging around the city. Combat. Thankfully combat is on point too, borrowing a fair amount from the Arkham games. 
combat feels incredibly similar to those games, as Spidey can punch and web his opponents at first, but you eventually build up a cool arsenal of gadgets and moves to make for a lot of fun. Spidey Sense is also put to good use, as it tells you when an enemy is about to hit you, you just press circle to dodge out the way. Later upgrades allow you to perfectly time dodges to web your opponents in the face so you can attack them with ease. Combat may seem a little hard at first because Spider-Man isn't as tough as Batman as Spidey can be downed in just a few hits, even on the lower difficulty. But once you get the hang of the combat and learn loads of new skills you soon get a rhythm going and you'll have a lot of fun performing cool attacks on various enemies. It also should be noted like the Arkham games you have goons with guns, shields, blunt weapons and brutes who all have to be taken down in their own particular way, and it's a nice way to spice up the combat. There is also combat encounters similar to the Predator style of gameplay in the Arkham games, as you keep by the ceiling and webbing and kicking out enemies one by one. You can also cause noise distractions to disperse a gang of goons, so you could pick them off one by one, and again it's really fun enjoyable and rather tense to see if you can down them all without other goons finding out. As for the other types of gameplay, Insomniac has also included small sections where you play as Peter Parker or Mary Jane, and the Peter ones see you exploring areas like the homeless shelter where Aunt May works and the lab where he works. There's also small puzzles to complete in the lab which are fun and you can talk to folks and look around to gain more appreciation for the world. The Mary Jane parts of the game are a little bit different, as they see MJ doing her job as a writer for the Daily Bugle, but the places where she goes to investigate aren't all that safe. So what we have here with her sections are is some light stealth gameplay sections that aren't actually really needed, they're okay but kind of break the immersion and bring the gameplay to a halt, as if you're seen it's game over and you have to start the section over again from the last checkpoint. It's not that the stealth sections are bad, they're just a bit boring compared to the Peter and Spider-Man sections. For the majority of the game's runtime, I would say that 90% of the time you are Spider-Man, which is great. And in Spider-Man, there's plenty to do outside the game's main storyline. There's a collection of typical open-world stuff like towers, collectibles and crimes to stop, as well as Oscorp stations to find and landmarks to take photos of. And while all this stuff is sort of cookie clutter filler stuff that you'd find in many other open world games, it's just so much fun to do all this stuff. See, as many a times I was going from point A to point B and I saw a backpack that was near me, so I decided to stop off along the way to collect it. Same when a crime is reported to happen near me. Normally in other open world games I just leave it and focus on the story, but here it really feels like it's worthwhile because it's just so much fun to be Spider-Man that I really just didn't want it to end. Lengthwise, the game is pretty lengthy, taking you around the 15 to 20 hour mark if you focus on the story and get a few of the collectibles. But if you take your time and try and complete all the side activities, side missions, and ultimately aim to get that 100%, then I'd say you're looking at a rather decent 30 to plus hours, depending on your skill and difficulty. As for when you complete the game, you can go back and mop all the loose ends, but alas, at the moment, there isn't no New Game Plus mode yet. Like the new God of War game, it's going to be included in a future update, as is a new harder difficulty mode. But Insomniac did say in a recent tweet that they're polishing the New Game Plus mode up, so maybe we haven't got too long to wait. It's also worth noting that the game has many little details that really bring this world to life. As when you're exploring the game by foot, people will stop and ask Spider-Man for selfies and high fives. You can also greet them and talk to them, which is a nice touch. Another nice feature is the podcast that feature J. Jonah Jameson that regularly appear in the game, that sees him talking about the recent in-game events, and typically blaming Spider-Man for them all. It's really rather hilarious some of the stuff this guy comes out with. Spider-Man also has his own Twitter feed, and it sees him posting on it and people replying to it. It's in... These little details that really do add a lot to this game. Performance wise the game is an entirely 30fps affair here with no uncapped options whatsoever and to the game's credit the game sticks to its 30fps cap for most of the game and only really drops when the action gets heated on both normal PS4 and PS4 Pro. Now on to the audio, and the game really hits out the park when it comes to all things audio. The voice acting is certainly on point with all the actors giving superb performances for all the characters. The actor for Peter Parker is a perfect match as he delivers a very impressive version of the character. The music is also top notch with some great tunes. 
One of the highlights is when you start swinging around New York and this Avengers-like music kicks in. It's brilliant and it never gets old. Conclusion time now, and Marvel Spider-Man is easily the best Spider-Man game out there, as it makes you feel so much like Spider-Man. From webbing around the city to beating up goons, it captures what it is to be like the webhead to an absolute T. Also included is a very impressive and sometimes rather emotional storyline to make for one of the best Spider-Man tales out there. And while Spider-Man may not reinvent the wheel or try anything new when it comes to its open world, the truth is it doesn't need to as the game is a nut of joy to play and offers many hours of web sling and fun. And at the end of the day, that's what playing video games is all about, having fun. So that's why I'm giving Marvel's Spider-Man a 9 out of 10 with the title of Brilliant. Thank you for watching my review, like, rate and subscribe and until next time, happy gaming. Bye!